women have to rise up to put their hands to work, to be able to help and sustain their home with other men. Even if the men will come in to bring something, you as a woman or a young girl, you should be able to contribute. My name is Lena Esdo, by the way of introduction, and I'm a member of the Triumphant Living Miracle Assemblies. I'm the supervisor of the Triumphant Christian Academy School. I focus on women, most especially for my mother. She's not educated yet. She sells pepper color. She sells Gary Yoko. She sells all of that to sustain us. And I'm a graduate of the University of Liberia. I got a BA degree in demographics and sociology minor. So she sells all of that to Metin or to send us to school to get us where we are. I thought it was about when my mother can go through the process by selling paper colors, carry your car to send us to school. I can also go out there to people who are in need, who are not doing anything in their home. After I have searched around the community, around the vicinity, I noticed that most women are not impactful in their homes, in their community when it comes to trade. What is you have to prepare or okay, create, you have to do a sewing, we refer to as seamstress as a lady, and the soap making as well. So after my own observation within the community, within the vicinity, I didn't end necessarily to ask God for direction, because without God, you cannot do anything. So I paddled about it, I went to bed, and by the grace of God, God gave me this vision to go out, to talk to women, to improve their lives, by the way of doing trade in the very, very capacity mm. where we have catering, tailoring, soap making, even decoration. We got act decoration as well. So when the vision came about, I asked God for direction, and he gave me direction. So I asked myself, and I asked God, well, how am I going to start? No finance. How? <laughs> And I'm the teacher, I'm telling Thomas. What? And we are here to teach the Liberian women about their emp empowerment, how to empower themselves. Like we are teaching them here to learn how to cater and how to do bread making, cake making, and cater to occasions. So what they are, learn they are learning here is what they will learn tomorrow to be able to help themselves. Okay. And we have started, and this is a church institution for now, we are still struggling with things like the kitchen utensils, the baking, the oven, and everything. We are, we don't have anything like that. I was in Ghana as a refugee, and they had these institutions there too for women. So I took advantage of it and learned it. But I didn't know I was going to come back here, but anyway, I came back, and I was able to impart what I learned from Ghana here from the refugee camp. It's so important to everybody because it's like you have to eat and have, and they have occasions that you have to cater to also and they also help people to help themselves because if they learn these things tomorrow they'll be able to help themselves tomorrow in the future mm -hmm. like they will have contracts to do for weddings birthday parties and everything so this is why cooking is very important I'm hoping to see more women doing more than this, opening restaurants, helping people, organize seminars, catering and everything. So if you, if you know your trade, if you graduate from here, you go out there, you can make a mic. Like for my seamstress, my, one of my, my, my staff, it's what she lives by. She goes to people's clothes and she living by it. She pay her rent as well. My catering, one of my staff is there, we are in person of Tony. She's here. She been baking for people, wedding cake, essence cake, bolo, shortbread. And she lived by it as well. She's not married. But because of her skills, she lived by it and she sustained her family by that. So it's very, very much important for we the women to come and to put our hands to work, to be better person in society, to help to sustain our home and to help our husband that will not be disenchanted.
Mm. Like the world out there, disenchanted women are no, like they don't have voices again in our society because they are not good in classroom. Even to put their hands to work to make a short bread, they are not able. So I noticed that people then marginalized, people look down upon them. And actually I got a hard beef for women. Yes, I love, I love women. I love them. They are, they are potential people. They can make things happen. So for the few times they have been here, I've been observing their works, their hands work, and I know we are getting there by the grace of God. But when it comes to the equipment, it's very, very challenging. As you can see, we got about some of the five percent of our students here, the machine, the machine is limited. Even when we get to the catering department, we lack of oven, cooking utensils. Yes, we 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 ready started on a log mark and it's very, very difficult to admit because everything in life, you have to go through such challenges. And especially the foundation. The foundation is very, very hard to maintain if or you don't have the funding. But we stay trusting and believing God to make provision, to connect us with people so we can be able to maintain our staffs on a salary and to get equipment for our students, mm. our parents, our sisters, our young people out there, they are here and they are willing to admit, they are willing to learn. For the past two months, I observed their works and they are really doing well. Their performance is encouraging. But now, as I speak, the two things is challenging is that the teacher salary and that of the work, the, the, the equipment for the various departments. Mm -hmm. For the little we have, that what we start with and gradually we are going on to gradually. But we still need more.